Hi, I'm your host, Didi Chang. In this special episode of Audio Builders TV, we are going to take a deep dive into microphone placement for live theater. Our presenter is Kevin Thurber. Kevin started as an assistant at the Hanover Theater and the DCU Center in 2009, where he studied under Nick Joyce and became smart certified. He quickly became a freelance A1, working in Boston's most prominent rooms. He also builds analog synthesizers and repairs vintage audio equipment at Analog Craftsman. In 2016, Kevin became the A1 slash sound supervisor at the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Concord Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and sign up for our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Hi, I'm Kevin Thurber. I'm a freelance audio engineer and sound designer. And today I'm here with Audio Builders TV to discuss three different methods of theatrical mic rigging. The first one we'll be looking at is center forehead rigging using wig clips. So here are our materials. We have a couple of tan wig clips, although you generally want to try to match whatever color the hair of your actor is. We have some black stretchy elastic, and in this way we can attach the mic to the wig clips. I have some scissors here just for trimming the elastic, and we have some transport medical tape for securing the wire to the back of our actor's neck. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just trim off the ends of this elastic so it's easier to feed through the holes on the wig clips. So now what you want to do is basically make a loop over the top of the wig clip. So on the side of the wig clip here, you have these couple of holes. So you want to go through the back hole, feed it up through, take the other side, feed it up through, and so you end up with a loop just like this. So now what we're going to do is take the black elastic and come through the loop to basically create a twist in the wig clip. So now we're going to take this whole situation, move it over to this side, and tie a knot in the elastic to secure it. And then we're going to bring it back over. So now you have this nice looped over figure eight elastic that you can tuck your microphone through, and the wig clip will attach, and you're away. So generally you want to prepare two or three of these for your actor, depending on how it goes. For today, we're just going to take a look at one with the idea that it's just demonstrating what you need to do. So once this is complete, you're going to tie a second knot in your elastic to secure it. And you're going to trim off any excess. Then you're going to take your lavalier element and feed it through your wig clip. So using this figure eight here, you can loop it under this side and then bring it back around and loop it through the other side. So you're ending up with it through the middle of the figure eight. So here you are with the completed rig or one part of the completed rig. Generally you do another center forehead, another at the back of the head. So here is this for you to see. So now let's come over and take a look at placing it on our actress. This is Dee Dee. She's gonna be our actress for today. So basically what we're going to do, want to do is open up the wig clip. You're gonna come over to your actor or actress's hair. And what you'd like to do is find a place that a natural part can be and sort of open that hair up at that point. And you're going to bring the wig clip in to the part. And the placement of this is going to depend on your preference for your sound. Um, and this is going to just be a bit of pressure down while it clips. So this clips about center forehead. 
And at this point, we're going to try to bring the hair back over it. Now, Didi has her hair up right now, just to sort of demonstrate what's going on here. But generally, we'd want to work the hair over so it's covering the wire, the run of the wire. So then it, brings, it comes back. You would do another clip sort of here as a position. And then perhaps another clip on the back of the head. And then you may want to tape down the wire to the very back of her neck. Important part here is you want her to lean forward with her head so that she has enough slack to move her head around as she goes. So the benefits of rigging in this style are you have a great center forehead placement, which is generally a great sounding placement. Uh, it can hide very easily in the hair. If the actress or actor happens to be wearing a wig, this can rig very well underneath the wig. So it can attach to the wig clip, the wig cap, because you're using wig clips already. Uh, and ultimately, this is a method that's good to go for if you have plenty of prep time and you're dealing with consistent actors and actresses. So I'm going to now deprep. I'm going to remove this from Didi. So it's just another unclip and pull it away. And then you're all set with this style. Audio Builders TV would like to recognize the Concord Education Fund for their generous support in the development of curricula, programs, and initiatives for students and teachers. So now we're going to take a look at the over-the-ear style. The great benefit behind this style is that it doesn't interfere with any sort of costume changes. It doesn't interfere with anything going on in the hair, perhaps if there are wig changes throughout the show. And all you need is the microphone and some transport medical tape. You're going to generally use three pieces of tape. So the first piece of tape is going to be placed just below the head of the microphone. So if you take a look at the microphone here, just place a piece of tape just like this on the head of the microphone. I'm just going to brush your, bear back, your hair back here, Dee Dee. And the idea with this is you want to go right on the cheekbone of whoever it is your, your actor is. So it'll let the microphone will land sort of right where my pinky is. So the wire gets looped over the ear and gets taped right about here. And in this way, you're fairly close to the mouth, so you get good gain before feedback. And you, have, you pick up some resonance from it being on the bone. So the second piece of tape is going to be just underneath the ear. And I'm going to ask Dee Dee to turn her head to her left. And this way, she has enough slack to turn her head if she ever feels the need to. While she's acting, we want to do our best not to interfere with anything that's going on. So the second piece of tape, if I can just brush your hair out of the way, this is an important step to make sure the tape will actually stick, is going to be placed right around here, just behind the jawline. And the third piece of tape, once again, the, mic the, the microphone wire will run back here behind the head, will be taped right here, right on the back of the head, in line with this. And again, you want to lean your head forward to make sure you have enough slack for anything that you happen to be looking down at. Um, sometimes it's worth stepping up to, to one inch tape or some different styles of tape if you have issues with it sticking because the problem with relying on just tape is if somebody's moving around a lot and they have any issues with the tape coming loose, you might lose your placement, which can be pretty bad during a live show. So now I'm going to remove this from Didi. This might hurt just a slight bit as I remove the tape. As it caught some hair. And remove this piece of tape here. And now you're all set. So let's take a look now at uh, an over, another style of over the ear using an ear rig. So this is a pretty labor intensive procedure. And you're going to need something called a Hellerman tool. So this right here is a tool designed for stretching surgical tubing. So you'll need a Hellerman tool and some Hellerman sleeves. So these small tan rubber sleeves. Let's grab one of these. And you will need some scissors and similarly the tape. So what we're going to do first is take a look at this ear rig. So this is just a metal loop. And the idea is this lands inside of your ear and this comes out over and behind your ear. So the first thing we're going to do is just take our Hellerman sleeve and trim it down a bit. Because we don't need a whole lot to attach this microphone. So there we are with that. And then you're going to slip your Hellerman sleeve over the, the tines of this Hellerman. And this can be a bit tough at times. Sometimes it's worth using some alcohol wipes just as a lubricant to slide this over. 
but generally if you get it on there enough, you can stretch it to the point where it won't be an issue. Basically you want to get it past the teeth of the Hellerman, and that way you can feed the microphone capsule through. So that's about okay. Usually I go for a bit more, but this will work fine for today. So now what we're going to do is approximately place our microphone on the ear loop. And we're going to take the sleeve and slide it over the ear loop, over the microphone capsule, and then slide the sleeve off of the Hellerman, and it basically attaches right to the ear loop. This sleeving is a bit thin for this style of microphone capsule, so what you can do is purchase just some sleeving that has a wider opening in it, and this would work well for ear rigs or other situations where you have to go wider with the Hellerman. So, once again, feed this on here. And we'll stretch this out. There we go. And continue on. And sort of let the Hellerman go on right at where we want the wire to come off of the ear rig. So now we have a pretty consistent placement for our microphone. And we're going to use the tape here just to dress up the wire and make sure the ear rig stays on. So let's come over, come back to Didi. And do you mind if I place this on you, Didi? Great. So this is going to go over her ear. Would you just turn to your side for me? Thank you. And land somewhere just like this. So the great parts about this system is that your microphone placement is going to be extremely consistent every night. The microphone is going to be in the same place and it should stay in place a lot easier than the taping because you have a piece of metal here to guide the placement of the microphone. So now what I'm going to do is pull some of Didi's hair out of the way and apply a piece of tape. Pardon me just here beside the ear to hold the ear rig. Then another piece of tape right here to adjust the wire down her neck. And then similarly, one more piece of tape on the back of her head just to secure it in place. So that's an alternative style of over the ear rigging. And as I said, the consistency here is the best part about this style. But the issue is it's rather labor intensive and can be pretty specific depending on your actor's ear shape and what sort of movement they have. And it leaves some room for error if they have some costume changes where there's a chance for the ear rig itself to get caught on anything. Um, and sometimes they can be uncomfortable for actors if you're really trying to get a tight fit. Now the halo rig is great because it can give you the same center forehead placement as the wig clip rig, but being much easier to take on, put on and take off. So the idea with this is you do want to try to size this to your actor's head. It's not going to be exact for today, just for demonstration purposes, but you're going to take this and trim it. And what you want to do here is take your lavalier element and create a loop and you're going to take your elastic and basically tie a knot across the loop. So you can really start with just tying a knot here. Uh, and you can usually go for a clove hitch or just an overhand knot, whatever you find to work better. 
So here's Didi. And we want our microphone to land somewhere here. So we're going to take our elastic, make sure that's tight, make our loop, pull the elastic around her head. And the idea here is to follow the hairline so that it will eventually dress away once we clean up the hair. And it's going to tie at the back of her head, tie to the same wire as I showed you before on the table. And I'm just going to tweak this into place. So this can be kind of an adjustment type of thing until you get it exactly right, which is why it's good to try to size it when you have an opportunity. One moment here. Try not to tie this into your hair too much. bring this around. So now you have the benefit of a center forehead placement and if this can be dressed underneath the hairline you can end up with something that pretty much disappears if you have the right colors going on. And with Didi's hair pulled back it doesn't exactly dress away but you can run it through the hair and sort of get rid of that look. And again you have the center forehead placement which generally sounds very good on most male and female voices of all ranges. And you have this clear elastic, which generally disappears, and you have a wire that you can dress underneath the hairline. So those are the three methods that I generally like using for my theatrical mic rigging. Once again, that was the center forehead using wig clips, two different styles of an over-the-ear rigging, and finally, uh, halo rigging. So thank you, Didi, and thank you for watching ABTV.